What is up everybody? We had The Bachelorette, the men tell all tonight, and it kind of feels like we are really on a fast forward track to the end of the season now. Tomorrow night is Hometowns, and then next week we have another two episodes on Monday and Tuesday, which I assume will be uh, Fantasy Suites on Monday and the finale on Tuesday. So let's get into tonight's episode. So first up, the first thing I want to talk about is our final four and how we got there. We opened the night up with a one-on-one -on -one date with Blake and Tasha. Um, I don't think any of us were surprised here to see Blake get sent home. Uh, Tasha was quite sad about the uh, him, seeing him depart and then proceeded to go back to La Quinta and take Riley aside and promptly send him home as well. That leaves us with uh, five guys heading into the cocktail party until Bennett shows up, which gives us six. And like we see those six guys standing there and I think every single one of us watching knew exactly who the final four was gonna be. You know, as much as Bennett thought he was going to get one of those roses, there just was no chance. Uh, it's kind of fitting to see Noah and Bennett walk out the door together because they have been a source of drama all season long. Particularly Bennett, he has been the drama queen of the season, uh, but uh, maybe we can jump into that a little more later. So that leaves Ben, Zach, Ivan, and Brendan as the final four. Um, I think the majority of people, that's probably who they predicted the final four to be. I think uh, there's some variance on who people think is going to get the final rose at the end. Right now, uh, my heart is with Zach. I think it's gonna be him who gets the final rose, but we'll just have to wait and see. A lot can happen between hometowns, fantasy suite, and of course the finale but there we are we're ready for hometowns and i'm very excited to see that all unfold tomorrow night all right next up on our list jumping into the men tell all uh, for one last time hopefully his name will never be uttered by any of us ever again after today and that is yosef i am just so over him I am so done with his BS. I'm so done with his message. I'm just so done with him, period. Uh, you know, the more we revisit that situation, the worse it looks on Yosef, and the more of a total piece of crap he looks like. You know, for him to come out and boldly say he has no regrets when it's clear to everyone else on the entire planet that... He was absolutely in the wrong, and he behaved like an absolute buffoon. He is an embarrassment to all of Bachelor Nation, and I honestly feel sorry for all of his friends and family, especially his daughter, who had to watch his atrocious behavior this season. And for him to come out and say that he would he would do it all again, and that he he would have... Like if he said, if his daughter behaved that way, he hopes someone would tell her off too. Like that is just wrong. I was just sitting there watching the whole piece with Chris, just hoping for Chris to just be like, you know what, Yosef, get the F out of here. You're done. Get out of here. It would have been so satisfying. And it seemed like Chris wanted to, but uh, instead he just cut things short, gave him his chance to try to redeem himself. And then was just like, all right, later let's move on all right number three uh the just the men tell all in general you know this seemed like a reduced group over what we're we're used to the majority of the guys were from the end of Tasha's season uh i think all of them except for yosef were part of Tasha's season so all the guys who who were just part of claire's season none of them made it uh to the men tell all which uh, just just had a different vibe. And also, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but it almost seemed like they s intentionally split the two sides of the room into teams. 
Like we had Ed and Bennett who Ed's just been Bennett's minion, like all season long, Kenny, who was there backing Bennett, uh, and then Riley. And then on the other side, we have Demar and Jason and, uh, Noah and Blake. And it kind of seemed like on all of the issues, it was one side of the room versus the other side of the room. Uh, all right. Number four, I'd hate to dive back into this, but it's Noah and Bennett. You know, shocker, we can't go through the men tell all without seeing Noah and Bennett face off once again. And one thing I really picked up on and was really rammed home for me is one tactic that Bennett repeatedly used all season long in order to manipulate conversations and discredit other people. And he always tries to force someone to use evidence. He will try to force someone, hey, you say that I'm condescending, pick out an exact moment where I was condescending, otherwise uh, I won't believe you, or we, don't, like, we won't even have to have this conversation. And you know, in many situations, it's, it's, that's difficult to do. Like, hey, Bennett, you are very condescending. The way that you talk to people, well, pick out an exact example. And, and it's one of those things where typically you don't register an exact moment uh, to place as an example. And I, I know you probably should be able to, but it was just a tactic that Bennett used to uh, discredit the other people. And even we saw on, on the season, especially when it was Noah versus Bennett and Bennett kind of, or pardon me, Noah really standing up to Bennett and him actually being able to f defend himself. Even then, uh, Bennett took things a step further where he would say like, oh no, you didn't get the exact wording right for that situation. To, just to try to make it seem like his point was less valid. All season long, Bennett was condescending to every single person he talked to, including Tasha. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I'm 100% on team Noah moving forward. I think that he in general gets a bad rap from the majority of the guys who were on the show. He genuinely seemed like a nice guy. And when you saw him get sent home from T by Tasha, just how truly torn up he was, uh, it was it was a little heartbreaking. I think that he was there for the right reasons, even if some of the guys who are older than him didn't agree. And, uh, you know, all comes back. You walk into a place with a ridiculous mustache on your face, nobody's ever going to take you serious. And that's what happened this season. And that set Noah behind right from the start. If he came in, no mustache, he'd be getting to marry to Tasha right now. All right, number five. This is actually from the preview. I don't think this is any kind of spoiler or uh, any, uh, any degree of something that's going to ruin the episode for you next week. But in the preview, they showed it looked like it was Ben talking with Antonia Lafazo from Top Chef. It was, it was just one of those moments. She was only on the screen for a couple seconds. And, you know, I was thinking, is, is that Ben's sister? But I, I looked it up. No, it's not. So I'm not even sure that she was talking to Ben. But I'm very interested to see where does someone from Top Chef land in one of four, one of these four people's lives, uh, what the relationship is. And, you know, I want to know why, like we're kind of having a crossover episode between the bachelorette and top chef. So just a little detail that actually was my wife who picked it up in the, uh, preview we were watching through and she said, I know that person. So yeah, we're going to top chef and a bachelorette next week. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, I will be back again next Monday for another five things or from, or pardon me, not Monday. I will be back tomorrow. We're not going to skip hometowns. I will be back tomorrow for hometowns. I'm sure there will be a lot to unpack. And as always, thank you so much for watching until next time. We'll see you later.